Right. So good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Guru Tom Pena for FMA Discussion 396. And tonight we've got the full interview of uh, Grandmaster Bong Hornales. Okay. Uh, there you go. Hi, JM Bong. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, sun is up a little bit today. So it was kind of warm. <laughs> So, which is good, but that meant that I have to do some DIY. So. <laughs> well, timing is always crucial right there. So, if you have to do it, do it quick. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, you can't say, uh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. No, it might change. Weather might change tomorrow. Then so, be your timing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how about you, uh, Jim? How, how are things over there? It's still raining all the time and the mm. weather is just fine, you know. That's okay. It's, uh, today it's in the 50s. So okay. I can tolerate that. And usually every day I walk my two dogs. <laughs> you know, wow. give them a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, that would calm them down right now. I can hear them barking. <laughs> what kind of dogs do you have, Jim? Uh, I have a soft coated Wheaton. Uh, oh, got it. Yep. They're more like, uh, I would say, uh, we call those, uh, they don't shed. That's the nice thing about it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you yeah. don't have any problem with uh, uh, with shedding at that point. Yeah. And, you know, they need, uh, you know, they need, they're high, uh, high active dogs. So mm -hmm. I have to take them for a walk. At the same time, they're giving me a good workout also. Oh, well, that's good. Every are, morning. Yeah. Are, they have, are they high maintenance? Uh, not well, just you know, grooming, giving okay. them a bath, and you know, I do that every other two weeks. So, <laughs> I do <give them laughs> a, a haircut myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay, so, uh, so hello, guys. Um, if you're watching this podcast, please um, say hi and tell us where you're watching from. And hopefully, uh, we do get a good like interaction with you coming from you asking questions for uh, uh, to GM Bong over here. So, um, GM, um, I know we already started like uh, discussing last night, like your journey to martial arts. So, um, uh, would it be possible to give us a sort of like a recap of it? Okay. Um... I started or uh, organized and uh, sometimes, you know, we call it founded, which I kind of give it a, a structure mm -hmm. and put myself a program where I can teach Filipino martial arts. At the beginning, I was uh, traveling with Rome, uh, Professor mm -hmm. Rome, uh, Rome Remy Price. Price. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm and uh, you know doing a lot of exhibitions and demonstrations mm -hmm. and he would also you know use me and some of my colleagues as examples of what you can learn about filipino martial arts and that went on in the 80s then uh, you know of course for me it's hard to travel all the time because i have kid children of my mm -hmm. own that, yeah you know, I spend time with them then i just kind of stop doing that, but still continued to promote Filipino martial arts by doing uh, entertainment, yeah. exhibitions, demonstrations, mm. you know, that uh, can be, you know, utilized for like a, a wellness program. It's a good yeah. workout, I believe oh, so. Yeah. Mm. Mm. so. But my program always starts with double sticks. Double sticks. But Jim, uh, before I we carry on that one, you uh although you traveled quite a lot with uh the late professor remy presses are you a modern artist practitioner uh, no well i i was adapted to modern I adapted to it. okay but you you didn't take any like grading or examination uh, under modern yeah Arnis. in a way you know uh just kind of helping promote filipino martial art the professor you know Granted, me and my colleague, and I know you can, you know, you know Kelly Warden. Yeah. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. We did, we did a lot of the, you know, seminars and workshop with the professor. 
So then kind of, and also Sashir and Nukala, as far as I okay. remember. Yeah, yeah. You know, the three of us there, and also there's one European guy, is uh, Dieter. Dieter? Uh, Dieter, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I interviewed Dieter last year. Okay, and you know, yeah. we were still very young back then. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, with them, they're, you know, they're really uh, a good support also with modern knees. And, you know, mm. they practice, they teach it. You know, they really promote it a lot. So in a way, uh, you know, I just kind of, you know, I, I take myself, I think the professor to, you know, bringing me under his wing mm -hmm. also, you know, helping and promote modernities and Filipino martial art. And uh, there were a, a handful of us granted the rank of Datu. As, okay. Uh, you know what it means by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the chieftain. Yeah, the chieftain, and, yeah. You know, in the long run, after the professor passed away, you know, everybody went on their own way to promote it. Mm -hmm. And, in uh, you know, and really, uh, what do you call it? Uh, enhance or uh, revolutionize modern Arnese. And you see the big difference. Mm -hmm. Everybody did a splendid, you know, uh, astonishing job. And yeah. uh, I went on my own way also. <clears throat> and uh, around here, is, there's hardly any f practitioner or instructor of Filipino martial arts here in the Midwest. And mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I found out that there's a group here in Wisconsin that uh, is connected with the Dose Pares. Okay. Yeah, and also they belong to the WECAF organization. Yeah. So I just kind of, okay, this might be a good path for me to, you know, to know what's out there in the Filipino martial arts is mm -hmm. World Eskrima Kali Arnis Association or Federation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Federation, yes. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and that way you get to see all the practitioners in there. So mm -hmm. in a way, in order to establish my system also is, hey, I competed. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you competed in week of, yeah, yeah, and I did that for many years when I have a, a group of students, it's, you know, I have to show them mm -hmm. how it's done, you know, and these are the standard uh, rule that you have to, you know, it's a sports, mm, so there mm, are the mm, rules, mm, mm, mm. So, which is also nice because you can apply what you know in there, yeah. no matter yeah. what style or, you know, gender you are. So what is mm. nice, I, I always like competition since yes. my karate days, I like forms, I like, you know, I like weaponry, I like to compete and, you know, trying to test myself. Mm. <laughs> the same thing when I had the chance to, you know, organize my, uh, <clears throat> my group is, yeah. you know, I did most of the, uh, the levels in there. I did the single stick fighting, the double stick fighting. I did forms, traditional forms. I did uh, contemporary forms with music. Okay. That, yep, that was the thing back then. Yeah. And right now, there's more category in there. You know, they have point system padded. They have continuous padded. You know, continuous padded sticks, and they have the live sticks, double uh, double stick fighting and team fighting. So there's so much things that you can really, you know, participate in our organization like we can. Yeah. And after now I belong to a new group, the, which is the GSBA, Global yes, GSBA, States, you know, association. So also it's the same, very similar rules, mm -hmm. but mainly uh, it's a new one that we're trying to, you know, invite more fee people to participate. Yeah. To participate. Is the GSBA uh, open to any any style? Correct. It's basically okay. the same just like we cast, you know. Okay. Any style, whether, you know, no matter what you are, no organization, all, you know, or yeah. system, it's welcome. So okay. it's, it's, it's pretty great. And um, a lot of my students really enjoyed it too. But the thing with that is you have to travel where, you know, or mm. the world competition. Mm. We yeah. go to three stages for, you know, we have the regional tournament, where it's kind of locally in your area, what region you are. Mm -hmm. And every region, you know, we have the East Coast region, the West Coast region, the mm 
the north and the south, then that's an elimination. If yeah. you pass that competition, then you go to the national. So it's also already you've got to establish your own players yeah. within those competition. Now mm -hmm. in the national, you're gonna all team up, whoever makes it to the national. You're all gonna team up for the USA yeah. team. Now, then after that, then wherever every uh, country that they have their own national team, yeah, national team yeah. world competition. Yeah. So, you know, it's more like the best of the best. Yeah. Yeah, worldwide. But the uh, camaraderie, uh, kapatiran, we call it, of the uh, organization is also amazing. You know, we, we compete yeah. with each other, but after that, we're all brothers. Yeah. Drink beer at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Happy hour. Happy hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the same here in the UK. Uh, although, like, Wake Up has been one of the long running ones, yep. there is, uh, I think, for the past few years, GSB, GSBA has been, like, also getting stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, like, competitors and, um, okay. Um, and what are the that what are the types of events do you have in GSBA? Is it the same as we cup? Oh, it's almost the same. Yep, almost the same. Yeah, we okay. have you know uh, we don't really do the point system. Mm -hmm. We do the continuous point system. Okay, continuous point system. Then you know they let you fight for 10, 14 seconds, and they break and they score you. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, they have all kinds of uh, art, uh, weaponry in there. They have the padded urny sticks. They have the padded mm -hmm. candle sticks. They get the, the, the tabakuyok, the nunchucks. Okay. You know, and you, you name it. Okay. You know, they're using it, you know. And I'm hoping that they'll be introduced, the uh, tatlong tuyok, the three-sectional staff, and the four-sectional staff also. This so, is for the annual competition. They, no, this is the uh, the point system. Oh, the point system. The fighting. Yeah. Okay. But the Anyo is also, uh, there's two ways of, uh, actually, there's many ways. They have the single stick or single blade forms. That's one event. Mm -hmm. The second event is double stick or, uh, you know, double blades mm -hmm. form. They separate everything. Sticks yeah. against sticks, blades against blades. Okay. Yep, and also they have the uh, traditional form and contemporary form. Contemporary form is you can do acrobatic kicks, you know. All right. Okay. Well, at least at least they separated the two. Oh yeah, but the thing is, right there, you have to utilize your your instrument or your weapon, eighty percent of it. You know? Okay. So you can't just do a lot of kicks and spinning and twirling. Yeah. You know. So. So <laughs> at least. At least, even in the contemporary uh, form event, there is like a not a restriction, but a compulsory part to it yeah. that you 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 have to have like eighty percent doing yeah. the stuff with your weapon, and then twenty percent it's like acrobatics or whatever you want to do. Yep, mm -hmm. and okay. there's a team form also. Ah, so which is nice, you know, you get your own team. And let me go back again with the stick fighting. Is there's also a team fighting also with single stick or double stick team fighting composed of three guys each team. Okay. And right there you can just choose from your region whatever you wanna compete with or with your USA team. Okay. Compete with another, you know, another country or whatnot. So mm -hmm. that that's okay. very interesting. It's busy and it's good, you know, it's I bet, fun. I bet, I bet. Um you mentioned earlier in the in the sparring, they allow uh, the shinai. Uh, no, actually, it's a long padded. Uh, it's a long padded. Yeah, like okay. a shinai or a kendo or a, I call it tungkod, You know. Okay. Okay. So okay. The same length, but it's padded. And Do they know, allow mixed weaponry in yeah. in the, in the sparring? Ah, okay. Yep. You can use a nunchaks or double sticks and the chop. They have a pad. It's all foam. Okay. Pad. So, that's and then your opponent could be using another type of weapon. Yes, yes. So it's that's actually good. good. That's actually good. Yeah, it's more like for me. That's that's what I call sandatahan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that means 
uh, you have to understand your own weapon. You yeah. have to understand basically how to manage your distance with your weapon against exactly. somebody else who's using a different type of weapon. Exactly. So it could be like a flexible weapon against a solid one. Yep. So that's interesting. That's yeah, nice. It's a good start. You know, yeah. I mean, the uh, organization is very new. So yeah, we started it. So, but you well, know, everything is part of your training is yeah. you, know, you specialize on weaponry and yeah. Filipino martial is mainly weaponry, you know, it makes, but makes in the Philippines it. right now, they're doing all this Vale Todo oh, yeah. and mm. cage fighting with sticks. It's, yeah, 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 the Wego Todo, Wego de Todo. Wego Todo, yeah, and they just yeah. wear a helmet and a glove and I yeah, say, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think they, they, they started that a, f a few years ago. Maybe yeah. almost like uh, a decade or less than a decade now. Yep. And it's just really gaining popularity now because uh, they already have like the the blessing from Pagcor. So they did well. They did well on that. And they, of course, that they want to make sure that uh, everything is safe for their uh, for their fighters as well. So it's just yeah. Really there's nice. a rules. I'm sure of that. So yeah. you know, if it's a yeah. sport, there gotta be a certain rules that you know you don't want to <laughs> yeah exactly well you have to be otherwise you won't be allowed to yeah. like and there's yeah. always a surrender also if you can yeah. Take it, yeah. you give up and yes you know, yeah throw your yeah <laughs> actually I, I think last year we actually interviewed uh the person behind it and a few okay. of the other instructors that are involved with it as well so it's actually kind of nice that it's it's like getting into the mainstream as well yeah. That way, go to the type yeah. of yeah. You get to see that that with is nice with the yeah. with the art itself, so it's all, you know. And it's they're well seasoned martial artists. Mm. You know, that's their destiny. Yeah, true. And yeah. they they have better fighters now because as far as I remember, when they started, what they did was basically asked like already mixed martial art fighters exactly i'm gonna i'm gonna train you with sticks and then there you go mm -hmm. but i think now they bas basically do like uh they have better training those yeah. who are really like into fma and then just want basically and want to basically fight in the cage yep mm -hmm. so yep. which is a nice platform as well yeah we we uh back in the philippines it seems like the sports of uh you know martial art is getting really great mm. you know which is good yep which it's is growing good. Mm. popularity and you know we have the our niece as the national sports now so mm. you know thankfully <laughs> it's back again <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So, and you know children can start early you know in school they teach it so um, if they want to carry on it continue it yeah you know, yeah they hey. go older. yeah it's it, it's time <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember uh senator subiri he said yeah he's, he, he's yeah. very yeah did a lot of fighting back then during his mm. day so yeah and it's very in instrumental actually in in making sure that uh uh filipino martial arts through pickup oh, becomes yeah, yeah, yeah. becomes really popular and be be taught properly as well yeah, and he still practice with his busy mm. time yeah he's practice so i know a lot of mm. people who's working out with him so yeah great and uh <laughs> any any question from my uh friends out okay. there uh hold, hold on okay so let's uh say uh richard said uh, richard Pakwan says hi from kansas oh. kurt from alaska says hi terry hoven uh howdy from stockton uh dean franco says hi everyone oh, great. Um, richard Pakman, there's a question here do the coaches or instructors change as well in in the national team or a voted panel of coaches are solidified to coach the national team just out of curiosity well the thing with this is uh, when we do our training is the the participants help it's harder we do the coaching you know ourselves we do the cheering for it also so because we're just a handful of players you know and uh assistance right there is you know 
anybody maybe from another team from another region would help to coach uh, we are allowed to have two coaches for every okay. corner for every players you know and in the team competition they, there's no coach in there all yeah. right and everybody gets one round continuous you know, fighting whether it's single stick or double stick then after that there's no break next guy goes in third guy goes in and there will be th three judges you know you have to be really uh what they call a well-seasoned fighter to mm -hmm. judge it because you know who's getting yeah flat. you know it seems like it's fast forward speed yeah. it's so fast and they'll do it for a minute non-stop so and that's how they score it and the scoring is quite easy it's like boxing they give mm -hmm. 10 10 9 point system so whoever's the best and you know and they that's how they calculate it which is pretty pretty good because there's no such thing you have to wait until <laughs> <laughs> somebody goes down or what no you know who's, who's doing the right thing and yeah more effective strikes yeah so uh gm uh, as far as the coaches that are involved are they are they selected or do you volunteer for it how, you, how yeah you volunteer for it okay but they're all they're also players and uh, you know they would just coach you help you what you need on the corner and mm -hmm. what to be done and you know but sometimes there's crowds out there that would help coach because of, of the adrenaline that's, the everyone. Case. <laughs> that's always the case <laughs> yeah and you know there's there's always a way of how you train your your players and how to coach it yeah yeah, yeah everybody yeah, yeah. has different terminology yeah, like, yeah be yeah. a dialect could be a, a yeah you know, an english word it could be yeah. you know and tagalog word which is I, yeah. really that's what i kind of uh actually that's what i tried to use is all the tagalog or filipino word mm -hmm. like you know uh like katastas and puno is my rank with this i'm yeah. the tree puno is three yeah and and my uh my, my instructors i call them tagapagturo so to shorten okay. it it's turo you know yeah because we can point the way to yeah, yeah. turuan the ruan yes yep mm -hmm. so it's nice that you're still like uh you're managing to like uh integrate the filipino words in, uh, into the system and the way you address each other oh yeah it's you know it's always the same thing we have to do it uh i have to do it that way in order to you know if i'm studying japanese karate i have to learn everything in japanese terminology mm, 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 mm. taekwondo the kunsu, yeah karate, yep, yep. you know and uh you know i know it's hard to to remember those but that's part of the uh, curricular, yeah. you know, agenda there. And I'm doing the same thing is, mm -hmm. you know, it's sometimes it's just too long. It's too funny to say in Filipino, but <laughs> hey, that's the way it is, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the same thing with, you know, the counting. I yeah. Use the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, uh, it's, that's nice. Else? That's Kamai, nice. Kamai is like, you know, everybody knows the Philippines. When we say kamayan, it means food. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's the hand technique. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So it doesn't always have to mean food, guys. Yeah. Remember that. Okay. Yeah. And okay, like so, <laughs> um, there's a question here from Konia, Jim. Um, where, where do you hold the GSBAs or where are they held? Uh, depends on the uh, the region, you know, who's whoever's going to host it let's say uh there's a vote for it who's going to host the uh let's say the regional in my area is always in wisconsin okay you know and because you know, that's more neutral for everyone people from ohio uh, yeah. indiana illinois uh, from uh, way up north uh, minnesota they come down and meet okay. in wisconsin and california is pretty long so it's mainly in the center of California somewhere there. Okay. How about the, I think, uh, Konia is from Utah. Utah. Yeah. I think they probably belong to the West Coast. Okay. You know, so California would be the regional thing. But, you know, they have, you have, sometimes there's always an ad for it. 
announcement where it's going to be held for you know qualifiers who wants to join gsba you know so there's a membership you have to be a member to compete in gsba and you can be on your own after that you know you're from utah okay that's great but you you belong to this region the west coast region okay okay there's a question here from kurt when it comes to the tournament scene how does the fma open tournaments compare to the things like a nasca or isca in size and participants uh, isca is the karate is that what you call it the karate thing right yeah that that might be that is that, that uh, north uh, yeah yeah that's karate yeah okay yeah the uh, especially with them is it's a point system in isca so you know it's basically almost the same and they have performance with uh, with the forms they uh, but they don't have uh, the, their form is combined with the contemporary i believe mm. you know and but they, they, they have like um they have do they do they get a lot of participants gsba and uh, a lot of uh players yeah a lot of players and basically a lot of maybe a lot of viewers a lot of people who would like to watch the competition oh yeah there's always a lot especially on the west coast that's the biggest group of uh practitioners in there you know okay and here in the midwest we're more like how the northern <laughs> land it's cold and we're all spread out and very few filipinos don't like the cold weather you know? <laughs> yeah. unless you live in a big city like detroit yeah. you know yeah. and you're a professional by your career and everybody yeah. painting all around in this area by the Great Lakes, you know, Indiana, Illinois, uh, Minnesota, you know, Wisconsin. Okay. So, and all the way, you know, if you want to go to New York, also. Yeah. Right there, so Buffalo, New York. Uh, Tim Hartman knows that too, you know, and he's from Buffalo and he's a really good friend of mine. So. Mm. Maybe GM, if you have like any flyers for the competition, um you you can actually like share it to fma discussion so at least oh, yeah. people will, will will know yeah, or, uh, yeah i usually get a lot of uh of what they call this ad for the you know whatever events going on like mm. the one in england i just got the flyer with that that they're doing their you know elimination already for the, yeah for the gsba yeah gsba yeah 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 i think i saw the i saw the announcement in the british council yep because normally they post the stuff as in the in the british council as well so yeah so um, yeah. yeah that's mainly it that's the you know if you go to the uh, regional it's always an elimination and they only need you know i think uh at least three representative for every event mm -hmm. you get the first place second place and third place okay you can go to the national so you know if uh, the, the first place can't go to the uh to the national they bump it up the second place can go the third place can go and they carry on the fourth place guy who won in that tournament from the regional so it's always a spot then okay you know, the same thing uh -huh. when it happens to the national they will ask who wants to compete in the world you know then you have to really they ask that in advance so they can really position all the players in there okay uh with regards to the gsba is there anything happening in the philippines uh, not really as far as i know okay. we don't have any representative in the philippines i uh, i tried to invite everyone but they're so busy with their uh, was that pika yeah because pika is very uh yeah, yeah very active especially in the asian uh um, yeah southeast asian games yeah yep the asian games and they have the uh you know most competition and whatnot all, all kinds of sports are going on there right mm. now mm. very very active and also we have all those great players from the Cordillera mountains the uh yeah. team, was it team lakai team lakai yes yes yep. they're really doing good really. yeah I mean, they're they're even in even in MMA, they're actually really yeah. doing well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And besides that, boxing. Yeah. Yeah. As well. 
Yeah, I mean, those guys are tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of good players out there. Yeah. I'm really impressed. And, you know, I follow most of the, the boxing mm. stuff going on around the world, and I enjoy, you know, mm. it's, it, it's fun. You learn something from it also. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, when the first time that I actually uh, uh, watched... Uh, is it uh, one championship? The one in the Philippines? Uh, I think it's one one championship. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean the, the team Lakai delivers. Yeah, I, I was like I was I, I, I wasn't like surprised why people actually rave when when team Lakai comes in. But yeah, they deliver very oh, yeah. very impressive. awesome players. Yeah, impressive and, and players. Yeah, enjoy watching the super lightweight. They're tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Richard, yes. One FCS. Cheers, bro. Okay. Um, Jim, I'm curious about the uh, your system, Bong Hornales. How did it come about? And um, I mean, who, what? What were like your ins the inspirations the 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 um when you when you were like um developing your system? I was thinking to be more uh, what we call it that would complement other martial arts. I tried mm -hmm. it. You know, I'm sure everybody's still doing it. It's kind of okay. I'll uh, I'll teach a group with your karate people or mm -hmm. you know different style of. Uh, Asian martial arts in there and it seems like you know for a while it's going to have a good start but in the long run it's going to be watered down and you know sometimes they say no we're not doing that anymore so in a way what I'm doing right now is still doing the same thing trying to uh, complement the other martial art and at yeah. the same time it can stand by itself that my my style it can be competitive with other martial arts so you know, and some of my students have been competing with the, a national karate tournament in there, and you know they they do great. Okay, it's, it's it's more like an open tournament. That, yeah, you know, we have some players here who can kick, also who can punch, and we can do weaponry. And you know, except for the weaponry, we're the beginners of instead of <laughs> black belt. They'll be competing with black belts, which is more a challenge. You know, or brown belt, advanced karate people. So. So I, I did both ways. And as of now, right now, I'm just trying to, you know, open my doors that people who want to have a good start with Filipino martial arts, you know, they can still keep what art they're doing. Mm -hmm. but, you know, this one will just stand by itself and more understanding of what my, my uh, agenda, my program is, you know. So okay. try to break it down as much as possible that it'll be more family friendly. Yeah. You know, and uh, including pets friendly, also dogs can hold a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and uh, I call it the stick family, which is we, we, we specialize on all sorts of sticks, whether it's a toothpick, you know, chapstick. <laughs> oh, it is. It is very true, you know. And from there on, is, you know, so a long staff, then trans, uh, transition to d double ropes or single mm -hmm. long rope. Then you want to go to the heavier stuff like a regular chain. Yeah. Uh, lang, uh, <laughs> pinto, what do I Building chain. Bling. <laughs> and all, you know, the whips and whatnot, you know, you name it. And the combination of the stick and whips together, you know, it's, it's awesome. And still the same thing. You can still apply what I'm teaching from the very basic with mm -hmm. the double stick is getting to know your right hand from your left hand or vice yeah. versa because yeah everybody's different because there's are people who are good with the left hand and you know to tell you frankly is i'm very impressed with the professor he's left-handed okay yeah he is left-handed but he can teach you how to use your right hand real good by showing his right hand and well yes, yeah yes, yes. That's why I said, oh, I like double sticks. Uh, this is a good way to start it because it's the same thing when you learn 
to boxing, you have to learn how to use both ends, you know. But the, with boxing, is you got the south paw and the transition conventional, you know, right hand stands, left hand yeah, stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, everything is mirror image. You can go to the left or right or right or left, top, bottom, diagonal, mm. you know, from the corner to the bottom corner, the other corner, and you just fill in all the blank. Just fill it up with everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I try to make it more fun. Yeah. And enjoyable, you know, as much as possible. Yeah. It's not because, uh, you know, it's a contact sport, but, uh, you know, they always say no pain, no gain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to say it. No, no pain, you know, there's no pain, but it's all fun. Mm, mm, mm. So, and and um, would you it would it be fair to say that uh, when you were developing like your system, uh, your exposure to karate and taekwondo also had a lot of influence on it? Oh yeah, <laughs> I pick up what's the best for it, and if I can make it a lot shorter and easier and faster, because I'm I'm into speed. I like speed, and I'm all to impact. You know. Uh, I do practice a lot of grappling also, but I don't impose that too much. If, you know, if you have a tool, why not use it the way it should be done? I don't want to mm. try to catch mm. the guy. And, you know, I'd rather stop him first, then I'll probably do the, the choke with it. <laughs> and the same thing with the, you know, if, this just in a sense, in my mind, is if you have a knife, is you know, if you want to get rid of a target, is cut it as fast as you can. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes, sir. So there's no time of okay. I'm gonna be nice to you and nah, <laughs> nah. But yeah, nah. you can always kill them with kindness. Always... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work, <laughs> yeah, just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the saying, yeah, you know, kill them with kindness. If you can't, just take him out in the parking lot yeah. or out in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding with that. Make it clean. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, it's always fair to, if you can run away from it. Yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, Avoid it as much as you can. As possible. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to that, their level that, you know, yeah. even, you know, a lot of things is, you want to be above their level that, you know, the practicality mm. of it and what makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, both of you have been troubled at the same time. <laughs> exactly. All right, we, Richard has a question. GM, was Maria groomed in our niece, or you introduced her into your system to add to her other disciplines? If she also took other arts, oh, she did took other arts. Yeah, she was in karate, and uh, my wife Wendy, she was in the tournament at the one karate event right here. And she saw, you know, she saw Wendy. Mariah started when she was 13 with me. Mm. So, you know, that was awesome. And, you know, she wants to get to know me. And she's very curious about uh, the other arts also. Uh, we went with her when she started practicing Wushu also in China. You know, we, we, we get to meet uh, uh, Wubin. Wubin is with Jet Li's... Uh, coats ah. you know so i get to meet ruben way back when super 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 nice guy uh no english but okay <laughs> <laughs> yep and he came over here also in, in michigan they had a wushu seminar here also so you know i i'm i like all kinds of martial arts i believe and uh uh, especially when it comes to a lot of instruments, you know, whether it's blades, darts, or whatnot. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I always try to analyze it. I said, oh, okay, that's how it's done, you know. It's just how to read it and how to mm -hmm. dice and, you know, show it and break it down to other people. And it's also applicable to Filipino martial arts. So yeah, then it becomes Filipino martial arts once I start teaching it. Always adopting, oh, adapting yeah. and adopting. <laughs> As I said before, it's work like a sponge. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. And when I teach you guys, I'm giving you a tool, and mm. you can put that in your toolbox. Then you know, yeah. 
And yeah. if you don't need it, just disregard it. <laughs> yeah. And your your system is called Sandatahan. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Sandatahan, uh, actually the word is Sandata, you know, in the conjugation there, Han, which is more in action. Yeah. Like uh, the A-N is always added, like Suntok. Yep, Suntokan. You want to make it more moving, you know, adjective right here or mm. adverb, whatever you want to call it. Suntukan, you know, mm, mm. and PA is pa. Yeah. It's like to to do it, like panuntukan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, the the lingo is more like, okay, this is how we're going to splice and dice it. It's Filipino la language is very hard to learn, really. It gets very yeah. long. Like we call the uh, Patnugut, which is the founder. Mm. You know, uh, like, uh, our flag is Watawat. You hardly Watawat. hear that anymore. They call yeah. it Bandila. Like, you know, Bandila. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yep. That's and the true. same thing with the teachers. We call them Guru. With Guru. Kind of, okay. That's from the, the wise man from India. So <laughs> everybody's a Guru. And then the Turo, you know, usually yeah. like a Turo. Yeah. Or Suro. Same thing. Yeah. Turo, yes. Suro. Tuhon mm -hmm. is the highest. So <clears throat> you don't hear that. And right now, it's, I call a lot of the wise people from the uh, uh, Calderia Mountains Manong. So I call them Manong. Yeah, actually, it's a, being called a Manong is actually a it's a very respectful title. Yep, it came from the word Mano. Respect. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Manong is you know, exactly. So, and elders or you know, or wise men also. I would call it call it Mano. And yeah. Which I, I respect a lot of those people, and in Manila I call everyone Kuya, <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me feel young. <laughs> <Would I say? laughs> kuya, man, yeah, you know what Kuya means, right? Yeah, we have yes. to say that it's Big Brother. Big Brother, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, oh, Danny Terrell says hello, and yeah, Richard says yes, F one FC, yeah. Yep. One fighting championship, and he also mentioned Edward Fulayang. Fulayang, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Edward yeah. Fulayang, yeah. You know, he's he's super good. He's the first guy I've seen fight, and said, man, that guy is amazing. The Filipino Hulk. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I saw one of his fights when I was when I watch it. Um, uh, when I watch one FC in Moa. Oh so, really? Yeah. That was, yeah, I, I never had the chance to see them, you know, live personally. So I'm hoping maybe someday when I finally <laughs> okay, settle down and just be in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jim, so when you started teaching there, how did you find actually teaching FMA? Did you, did, how, how, did, did you manage to get a lot of, like, uh, did you manage to attract a lot of student, students within a short time? or it took it took a while it took a while i did a lot of exhibition and demonstrations uh, uh cultural events and people would ask okay yeah i'm gonna start a class and you know i have children at the age of five also learning it so and a lot of uh, my players are like you know especially the same thing with mariah she's been with me like few, like almost 15 years mm. so and fully concentrated it so you know and still doing it and her father also got involved with it uh, randy moore you know yeah uh, my my gentle giant <laughs> 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 yeah so he's he's a really good player and a really good instructor also so you know he's uh it's also teaching so okay you know. and you know the the thing is it's on and off, uh, hit or miss. Uh, uh, hardly any Filipinos in here, so you, mm. you know. And uh, you know, it's hard to find somebody that's really from the from the main from the Philippines. So, mm. but uh, a lot of them are usually you know in the neighboring cities here, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, Parker, you know. He lives a long way from where I live. 
So like, like he's driving like an hour and a half mm -hmm. to go to class. The same thing with Mariah uh, and Randy, you know, they, they live quite a distance. Quite, yeah, quite a distance. Okay. And they, um, they've been going to class, whether it's summer, spring, winter, mm -hmm. yeah. fall continuously. So, and I also want to announce to congratulate Mariah for having children right now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. How, how many, how many, how many kids does she have, does she have now? She has two right now. Two, so all right. Recently, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you, you get, you, in, in a few years time, they'll be walking, they'll be walking inside your dojo. <laughs> yeah, oh, Mariah was still training. She's uh, teaching training like like uh, health fitness, CrossFit okay. right now. All right. And you know, continues and same thing with Randy. Her father is still teaching. So, but mm -hmm. you know, everybody has their own way uh, with their life. So everybody gets busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So. That's true. And sometimes I wonder how I manage to do all this stuff while raising my kids <laughs> <laughs> and having so many, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta have a, your career. And besides that, you want to maintain the family and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's not that easy, but you know, you make time for it. Yeah. Yeah. Your passions. Yeah. Okay. So um when you start for example when you got a a new student coming to, to what is the first or yeah what is the first thing that you basically teach them as far as like let's say in in, in the weapon system uh okay here's my lesson plan or my my program is i uh you know sometimes i ask them what their background is you know mm -hmm. even if they have a little experience about it so they have knowledge of what a sport is or the discipline is like uh, i have a young guy right now he started last year when he was 16 now he's 17 with his uh you know and he said he started a little bit of boxing so okay we're gonna apply what you know in boxing mm -hmm. like giving you two sticks in your hand mm -hmm. you know? And the first thing that I showed him is the footwork. You know, you got to have a good stance for it, good balance, either to run in or to back out from it and mm -hmm. dance around it. So, and the first thing that I teach them is the uh, apat and sulo, the shortest mm -hmm. way how to maneuver your body without doing an extra step. You know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A quarter turn, half turn, quarter turn, half turn, being inside a diamond or a square. Mm -hmm. the four corners so i think i posted that on my facebook you know the four corners with this an old uh, video that i had way many years ago you know I, I i it's hard for me to do a video because i i'm always good in physically teaching you know filipino martial sometimes you have to do a real intimate teaching it's one-on-one -on -one. yeah and to put a big group of people is, you know, you got to go to their level, how they will comprehend and giving them all the angles to show like yeah. the Nasulo is the footwork. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a drawing or you have to, you have to face the mirror and break it down again. It's just like learning a form, but yeah. it's the footwork. So they learned how to do that. Always start to the left with this more, you know, the most common thing is we get hit on the left side, right? Yeah, on the left side, yes. The majority of people are you know, right-handed. Then I teach you to start to the right side. So just in case, you know, the guy is, you know, faking his uh, left hand. <laughs> <laughs> or the thing will be on this side. Then I go straight forward. Then from there, you turn around because nobody's going to face you if you're holding something in your hand or surprise mm, you. Yeah how to turn to the back real quick. So it's, it's very easy, four corners. That's one thing is then they would say, oh, I can't do that. You know, it's, it's sometimes you have to do a, a real positive way of saying, you know, you can do that. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. You know, mm. Nothing is impossible. You can do that. Then 
right now, like with Jacob, is he's just off with what he can do, you know. I gave him the ropes, he did it. I gave him a nunchucks, he did it. So by applying the same technique with the stick, I gave him some bull whips, he did it. I gave him three sectional staff. He said, I can't do that. I said, okay, you know. And uh, one of my uh, tool rope instructor uh, showed him, you know, you can do that. I'll work out with you. So it's, it's more like a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then after that, if they use all the instrument is, I'll show now the empty hands. Mm -hmm. so we start with a close fist and doing the same thing. You know, Wally, you know, all those uh, drills that we do. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sure all the Filipino martial arts does the same thing. So with the close fist, then it can be open, open, or it could be close and open, whatever, what you want to grab in there. Or you can use, you know, your fingers, the side of your hand, the ridge hand. And the same thing with the closed fist. You mm -hmm. use your whole arm as a stick. All parts of the hand you can use, you know. You can use a hammer, ridge hand, back fist, open palm, mm -hmm. scratch it, pinch it, mm -hmm. you know, poke it. <laughs> and all those things with your arm, you can use the side of your arm. You know the elbow and it's basically it's like a mixed martial art and the same thing you can use your head yeah <laughs> just your head and there's no rules in there if you don't want to you, you want to break it break down the, the rules or don't follow the rules is you can you can bite him yeah spitting is also part of it you can spit on to deter the eyes in there you know and uh it could be real deadly and real nasty and you know that's why they, they always say yeah, Filipino dirty boxing because yeah, they, yeah, you don't know what's coming. In. You know mm. the same thing with Siko and Two Hood. The same yeah. thing. You know, and all the kicks, whatnot. Kick is a kick. Everybody does a kick. So, and with Filipino martial arts, you know, the kicks are mainly low. <laughs> you know? So they start from the knee down. Then you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you mm. only kick them in the head when they're down, down there. <laughs> That's the typical, you know, <laughs> typical thing where I hear when you're down, they kick you right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you got, you, you want to need new dangers after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's how I look at it is, you know, same thing. You go to empty hands. Then after that is, is what you did with the double sticks is you practice yeah, the thing. right hand. And all the techniques in there, it could be more because it's single and it has to be faster than the double stick. That's why, you know, we do, we have the rule of uh, mabagal. You know what mabagal, right? Slow, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's slow. Then mabilis. Those are the mm -hmm. only two things we do. It's either slow or fast. Then we add in the last one, it's faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, I think, uh, there's a saying is when we're teaching is slow is smooth. Yes. Smooth is fast. Smooth. Yes. So that's true. fast is harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how, how I process everything. You know, then I have, you know, I sometimes I ask them, what's your fantasy about, you know, using kind of weaponry? And I will show you how you're going to use it. Because, you know, I've seen that uh, way back when I have two children, they were, also practicing Chinese wushi martial art, but okay, because you know they couldn't advance. But they said, "Oh, can you teach us how to use the ninth sectional whip?" I said, "Easy breezy." I'll show them how to utilize the the ropes first, you know. And yeah, you know, the, the rope is kind of more dangerous to teach with the children how to do the choke and the wrap and stuff like that. Because when you double wrap it, it would lock in and it would start to unloosen it. You know, so I, I hardly teach those techniques that could, you know, misuse. In a yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Mainly all the, the stopping technique for beginners is you're going to stop somebody from coming in, just whip them, snap them, you know. You don't want to chop them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in, in, uh, when it comes to forms, is you do all the reality thing because everything is just imaginary. You know, mm -hmm. doing your and you know 
or things that we don't really use in the sports is we use it there in the forums. And you could be more, you know, ambitious about doing a, you know, acrobatic or contemporary form is allowed to do that. Uh, you become a real artist because you, you're going to be a creative, you know, yeah. creative while you're doing things. Uh, when I teach a form, it's very simple and basic. Then I would ask them if they more advantages. You, you're going to enhance it. Make it last for two minutes. Okay. <laughs> so what happens is you basically give them the core yeah. and then you allow them to basically expand on it. Yep. Yeah. The, you know, I'll give them the rough end and they'll do the finish work. Okay. That's so good. We just kind of give them more challenge of, you know, being more uh, creative or they have their own imagination how what's going to happen if I do this. Mm -hmm. The professor also is a it's the same thing with this is, you know, he'll show you one technique. Okay. Everybody's trying to follow it, but you can do this also. Then you can do this. <laughs> you can do this. I said, wow, this is so versatile, you know, with yeah. and, you know, he's a, uh, he's a left lefty and he'll show it with the right hand. And he's really good with his left hand too. It's so fast. So, you know, he's more like a mentor to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And pretty much you, you 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 had a lot of uh, memorable moments with uh, the late Remy Presses. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know there are mo because he was so busy at that time. But there are moments that he would take me on one side and just kind of you know talk about family. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well it's nice. You know? So, but you know it's more like. Uh, for me, it's also comforting because also he's trying to influence me more to carry on. Mm. Because uh, he's the only guy, uh, one time he said, uh, when I saw him and I showed him what I can do and what I can use, I said, oh, you know, he said, I think you're the, the guy that uses a lot of uh, weaponry that I've ever met. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, I <laughs> then I kind of give him that. Oh, I can do this and do that and do. <laughs> yeah. So it it was you know fruitful because he said uh, only a master knows a master. So, yeah. You know, you can read every movement. And well, okay, it's the same thing that I do, and you know, and or could be better more. This guy mm. is amazing. You know. Mm -hmm. So and he's very charismatic. I would say I, I you know I can't stop talking about him. <laughs> he did a lot of good for the Filipino martial arts. And yeah, he did. With the he other, did. like mm -hmm. uh, Guru Dan, you know, Santo, you know, all the other uh, hurdled, uh, older people, you know, like scientific. Like, like scientific. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuper. Yeah, back, back, back. yeah. Yeah, back, back, back. Like, same neighborhood, but ne we never came eye to eye when we were growing up. He was on, you know, the Makati section. Uh, in a San Miguel village, and yeah, we're on the other side of the wall. <laughs> but I, I usually hang out, you know, in JP Rizal, and okay. all, all my, uh, you know, life experiences in Quiapo, Binondo, you know, Paco, San Andres, mm -hmm. you know, Ermita. Yeah, so it's more that those are my stomping ground, and you know, I just go home in Makati once in a while. <laughs> You know, my brother, my older brother and younger brother, you know, you know, they get to work out with Tuper back then. You know, he's really good and very mm. fast, and very practical, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's more like that. Back then, he's the Bruce Lee back then in our area. So Yeah. Yeah, I think he really spends quite a lot of time like in um, pressure testing it in sparring and everything. Oh, yeah. That's and, how he does it. Yeah, it's more like the same game that we do. You know, he he will go to places that he's not he's not supposed to be. And the same thing what I do is I'm not supposed to be in that area, but you know, you get you know, but way back when is the problem is everybody carries something, you know. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. It's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, a comb. I should, remember the comb back then in supply name matulis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and went to a technical school. I always carried a screwdriver. 
<laughs> Looks innocent. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Wear a belt with a big buckle. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. In my life, I, you know, back then, is, I've been stabbed and I stabbed somebody too. <laughs> when I yeah, that's that's basically the the rea reality of uh, growing up in those areas. Oh yeah, you you have to be prepared if yeah, you if you're gonna get on. yeah exactly yeah and if you're gonna go like defending yourself you're gonna go all violent you really have to like step it up otherwise otherwise yeah, yeah you'll be the one you have to give it also give up with it and if they want your money just give it away right? yeah exactly yeah that's true that's true. That's true. That's true. You you have to be sensible. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. practical with it, and you know, it's not worth yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, there's a question here from Kurt. Uh, which do you find to be easier, teaching a student who has no martial arts background, or one who does have a background? I think they're both for me. You know, both ways. Is the main thing is make them, you know, if the guy knows martial art or is kind of sometimes it's easy to tell them mm -hmm. techniques, but there's more than what they know actually in reality. And uh, the same thing with beginners is try to make them more relaxed and be more natural with themselves mm -hmm. and just show them, you know, the stepping stones that, you know, here's the path. But we do things more repeatedly and everything is manka halo combination yeah the word is halo halo here comes food again <laughs> <laughs> halo halo everything is halo halo you know yeah luckily i'll be in the philippines in two weeks time <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it, it's summertime right now it's that's the only thing it's gonna be too hot there but yeah, yeah. Halo, halo time <laughs> yeah. and uh the holiday is still there it's so busy that's mm. what my uh all the sun is saying yeah and, uh, you know and uh, it's just so hectic it is, everything is fully booked yeah True. opening up people are going to you know resorts we have a lot of resorts right now which is nice go to the philippines enjoy life there you know it's so nice exactly so, so yeah are you I'll... headed in Quezon city or uh, i'll be there near the end of uh near the end of the month Okay. I'll be in the area, especially in UP, because uh, that's uh, where I used to teach, and I'll be visiting visiting colleagues and also like meeting up with some uh, with uh, meeting up with my uh, uh, Aikido students, my mm -hmm. former Aikido students and uh, dance students as well. So it's gonna be a get together, oh, and nice. yeah, and former uh, unit in the ROTC as well. So yeah, my uh, my uh, I, I don't know if I can plug this in. My daughter Go. is from it's a UP grad also. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, in fact, my oldest sister also is a UP grad. Gilliman? Yep. Mm -hmm. UP grad. So this is way back when you know she's in her seventies already. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, UP is a good school and you know fun place to be if you you're lucky enough. You know, <laughs> Smart people are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we just we, writing we, about it, and I'm pretty impressed because I know a lot of UP grads and you know, real smart people and and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, and and those who are also like uh, uh, branded as leftists. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's why you know, they're super that's smart. <laughs> they're just very smart that's one thing you know <laughs> because you know i you know i'm not really involved in politics but you know a lot of the smart people are you know mm -hmm. true even the, the ups in other places in the visayas also are you know it's almost mm -hmm. equalized with that thing it's yeah really, you know just like the pma academy also there's a yeah. lot of good uh, military people in there you know mm -hmm. so Anyway, so any any other question that uh, you know, I have all night here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so guys, if you get any 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 more questions with um, uh, with GM, um, actually, so GM, when when 
whenever basically you work with your students preparing for competition um so let's say for the ones for aspiring mm -hmm. what what basically what are the like say the attributes the parameters that you actually work with them more yeah the the thing is uh we work with techniques stamina mm -hmm. and they have to be familiar with the rules yeah you know, you know, uh, in the competition there's no trusting because with our past experiences, trusting is even if you have the headgear mm -hmm. and the body, it, it goes yeah. right. It goes also, through, yeah. Yeah, mm. and the rattan stick splits also in mm. the long run. Mm. They don't, mm. you know, they mm. keep sometimes and just missing an eye. Mm. They also, and, uh, you know, just same thing. Conditioning is very important. And, you know, it's like boxing. You've got to be in good shape because, you know, just going with uh, one minute per round seems like forever mm -hmm. but you know if you know how to relax you know compose yourself and focus on what you know and try to uh, analyze your opponent immediately you you can read your opponent in the first round there's only three rounds in there and and you know there's 30 second or 45 seconds break only so it's fast so you, you go to the next round so you're thinking of three minutes of your life, mm -hmm. you know, just to go in that competition. <laughs> was there a was there a difference when you were preparing your students to fight in WCAF and to fight in GSBA? Basically the same. The same. You know, the same conditioning. We we do a mock up fighting all the time. Sometimes we overdo it in order to test their stamina. Mm -hmm. you know, because once you see that, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, once you see your opponent losing stamina and that's the time you want to you know pull out your adrenaline you know yeah so you really need to overload like, no matter how good you are but if you don't have stamina when it goes to the second round third round you know you lose all your chances there so, yeah yeah because that's that's basically when you start like um uh your level of performance starts going down especially if you don't have the stamina to back it up and so fighting is mainly like that, especially double sticks is mm. more stamina that you're going to need more because you're carrying <laughs> and you're your hitting armor, your sticks. gloves and your double <laughs> sticks. Yeah. You, know, you gotta be, you gotta be a good dancer. <laughs> a lot of movements in there. Mm. You know, there's a question. You, there's a question here for Kurt. So for scoring in the stick fights, is it about uh, stick hit volume? Or clean and power hits well it, all the above you know so uh, you want to hit hard it's up to you like, like I said it also takes a lot of condition but combination technique and most effective strikes is what you know qualifies you let's say well we engage two fighter engage and one guy hit you first but the other guy follow with a harder strike I would call okay. it the harder guy strike because it's a all thing, right you know and that's why the helmet is very crucial right there. That's because that's your protection. And, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, I don't have a helmet here, but uh, it protects you because of the harder impact. And it's fast. Yes. And for, for first timer, I would say uh, once you wear that helmet, it's, every time you get struck on the face, it's just like being hit with a, with a bullet. It's loud. You know, yeah, yeah, 22. So, yeah, plus it rattles, and on yeah, the it does, it does. area, also, it's you know, mm. there's a little bit, uh, it does. In there. yeah, yeah. Be, uh, yeah. I mean, I do remember the first time that I wore the helmet and did some sparring, yeah. Uh, when I got hit, it was like, <laughs> I was like, even like, yeah. okay, and you know, yeah. the same thing is just everything is conditioning, prepare yourself. Do a lot of training, spar, you know. That's why a lot of the players they, they spar all the time. And mm -hmm. the same thing with the individual is a lot of people they focus only on sparring, you know. Some people would only do in coaching, which is good also because you need a team to work yeah. with that. And some people just do forms. Yeah. You know? So if you want to do all all those levels right there. You know, that's what I do is I try to do 
do all the events. The same thing when I was in karate, is I would do everything, you know, and I would always come home with three trophies. And, <laughs> but, you know, there's bruises, of course, you know. You, you're going to get hit it comes, no what. Yeah. The bruises basically comes with, 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 uh, with, the, with the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's your pride and joy, you know, battle scar and what. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know the scoring is mainly pretty basic. Is uh, you know a ten nine system. You know, you think one guy is gaining, you score him ten, and the other guy is a little bit close, but he's nine. But he's not doing good. You score him eight. You know, for me, I hardly score five, <laughs> which I never do. You know, so I want to make sure it's pretty close. You know, and eight is at least you know. This guy needs more training, but the, that's the key right there is the the training and sparring makes you who you are in the Filipino martial art. Mm. You know, you, you, gotta, you either you get first place or second. Still, that's a really good good thing. You know, mm -hmm. that you're there to to prove yourself that you learn something from. Yeah, uh, FMA. So, Jim, how hard how hard is it to uh, to judge? like two competitors uh using two different type of weaponry oh that one is fairly the same you know that's in the padded section right there yeah they're still doing the same full contact continuous mm -hmm. you can do a lot of you know painting or faking motions and you can do a combination but you gotta have a strong blow the most effective thing so, but they stop it <laughs> it's not like we, okay. you know with the live stick is continuous so they score it immediately you know? okay the immediately it's more like in karate you know yeah yeah, yeah. Flag goes up you know the, the blue flag goes to the other guy so they call it a point it's the counting system and judging is you know you have to go to a a, a workshop or a seminar or orientation mm -hmm. you're one of the players to be the judges but we we train a lot of people to you know to sit in to do the judging and there'll be a shadow behind you uh you know uh, well experienced you know vice versa they will shadow you if you're a scorekeeper and you ask them what do you think you know have you been watching the fight you know you got to be really attentive and you know you can't be looking around <laughs> you got to watch every movements and understand and favor who's a good fighter okay so that's all there is is you know reading the motion understanding it and what's more most diverse technique you know mm -hmm. it's just like in the form also is the how to judge the score is make sure they use a lot of good combination good technique good balance you know and it's spontaneous agus yeah you know, it's a good flowing motion whether it's hard or soft and it should last at least close to maximum of two minutes okay so yeah that's a, that's a long time that's long. like tai chi there's a 20 minute form that you have to do in tai chi i know 20 minutes is like wow luckily they basically have the standard 44 but still you have to do it in 20 minutes so it's like yeah uh-huh it's it's you know it's a very good discipline right there it's a lot of focus and concentration because my nephew Vince Ornales is from the uh, in the uh, Northeast Boston last year. He's an uh, instructor in Tai Chi also, mm -hmm. and he teaches Filipino martial arts also back there. So, you know, it's in the family. <laughs> so, my nephew, it's my uncle's son. So, yeah. In, in, in GSBA, uh jim do they do they uh allow for example using kicks no uh, no the not thing is, uh, the competition is mainly sticks okay and uh, that's the only thing there's uh, there's no grabbing there's no pushing uh mainly stick you can check but just for two seconds to stop. okay you can back up to stop somebody from coming in you can divert checking is allowed to the hands 
not you can't touch the face mask okay only allowed to the body to the arms you know and uh the, the strikes is above the knee everything there all the way to the sides in front and you have to strike him facing your opponent you know you can't go behind or do a spin strike you have to be facing and you know always protect yourself also that's the key right there you, you gotta you have to use the defense it's not like you know wailing at his others there's no defense you gotta do some movements in there and keep your guards in front of you that's your defense mode right there mm -hmm. block you know you know you've seen that in some of my videos i'm just yeah, there. Yeah. I'm, I'm a dummy but i would block and i could hit you back some <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know nobody gets hurt you know yeah so i want to make it more fun and testing their capability and you know work on your speed and your stamina so guys you know i've seen that around it's a lot of people is they want don't want, they don't want to go back <laughs> class after <laughs> doing you know it's just introduction the sparring but it was just too much for them you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Uh, okay, know, I, I understand that. <laughs> we got a question from Danny here. The first one, uh, he, he has a couple of questions. The first one is this. How do you go about having your students develop power with their striking? Power is within yourself. You know, I will show you my power, but you can't really duplicate it. Because your power could be better than my power. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all in that uh, whipping technique. Because, you know, it basically, is, you want power. It's like, you know, if I want to chop something, you want power. You can get a really good strike to it just to strike it. But if mm -hmm. you want to cut it, you know, I'll get a chainsaw to cut it. That's what you call power right there. But it, it's within self right there. It's, you know, like in karate, you have to develop your own power also. They do a lot of board breaking. That's what I call their power. But for me, speed is power. Okay. Right. So, for example, like, uh, let's say you get them working on uh, tires. Okay. So, would you basically, like, get them uh, striking it, striking, for example, 100 times or 200 times or power? Or uh, how, how would you go about it, GM? Yeah, this, um, the tire is a good target practice also because I used that too and I made one for my son-in-law in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. When you practice soft and you just feel it, it's like driving a nail. You start slow, you know, with a hammer. And if you know, you're really sure about it, you feel it, strike it hard, you know. But, you know, for me, you got to learn how to control that. After you strike hard, you pull it back again, look at it. You know, mm -hmm. if it needs more pounding, you strike it harder and harder. But mm -hmm. that's how you develop your power. And as much as you can, uh, you know, when you're teaching, sometimes you exaggerate the motion. Yeah. You pull it back so hard, wail it back right here. You can't even see your hand, but you know you have it there. But for me, I want to keep it right in front, you know, with my program is always keep your garden there, like boxing. Yeah, you hardly see them way back right here and do a really, you know, long heart. But I know they use it once in a while if they see somebody mm -hmm. drowsy already. Same thing with the stick is I use my body to do that power. You know, yeah, the driving force is on your body, the, the center line and the horizontal line. You use your waistline, your shoulder, and your footwork twisting it. To give that full power right there you know the i teach that power also is when they swing the stitches you can hear the twin you know but the whistling yeah whistling yeah yeah, yeah. Not the other kind of wind <laughs> 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 yeah I, I put a lot of sense of humor when i'm <laughs> okay, right uh, there's another question by danny so which do you feel is more important for skill development once the the practitioner knows and can flow through two-person drills like sinawali or sombrada to continue with the flow drills or sparring 
yeah, uh, the, that's a good question right there. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Sinawali is a really, I use it a lot, Sinawali, because that's how we start also is you do Sinawali with double sticks together, mm -hmm. you know, then you break it apart. You can do Sinawali cross, crossing your arm, but there's a rhythm in there. You know, it's like music, like yeah. uh, Sinawali, heaven and earth, with his, we call it Sinawali number three. Is you always count one, two, three, other side, one, two, three. Then you're going to merge those two together. The rhythmic, the timing should be all the same. That one, two, three, four, five, six. And you mm -hmm. speed it up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then fast and fast, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you continuously develop that speed. Mm -hmm. Pa, 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 pa. So the rhythmic is continuously like drumming. The same thing when we do the practice exercise of some drumming. You know, some people get pa, 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 pa. they're good with that. Okay, now do it continuously for you know a thousand times without breaking the rhythm. So you can start slow and develop the speed. You know, and a lot, a lot of uh, you know I'm always going back with boxing because the, my training is. Base, basically with boxing technique, you know, that you got to be watching your opponent and using either this hand or that hand, how they move. But the, the technique is to develop that speed is continuously moving on. The Sinawali, the same thing. Like one, two, one, two, then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, and so on, and 12. And, and mm -hmm. when you do combination, I do you know, the odd counts instead of uh, uh, what we call as the, the even counts. It's in a while. But the odd counts is always the technique that I use. Like if I strike you with my pie, the abanico technique is one, two, three, then make it more one, two, three, four, five. So it's more flowing. You mm -hmm. develop speed and so on. And that's the same thing with the pabilog. The redonda is instead of one, two, three, one, two, three is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Okay. You just build it up, but the same rhythmic timing. And that's how, if you can do it real fast, make it smaller, it's going to be faster, and you can do it, you know, as many as you can. And there's always a saying where I learned from my uh, my cousin way back then when I was little, when I was just learning the pabilog, is you can do it, in, you know. 12 strikes in less than two seconds. 12 strikes in less than two wow. seconds. Wow. Yeah. It's all, you know, everything's just brushing. Mm. You want to mm. do the hard, mm. the hard strike is you do it at the very end. Yeah. Pow. Yeah. So you get two sets of six sixes. You do it, you know, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Pow. Right there. So you cover the whole perimeter in it. You fill in that void in there. You know, we always have a, a diagram. Here's the cross, here's the horizontal line, you know, and then the diagonal line. Then you fill it up. I think another, uh, is it Campbell? It's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Campbell, the Hawaiian Campbell, is, they have the same uh, principle about filling in the void. Uh, who is that actor that... Uh, Ed Parker and the younger one that became an actor in Campo. Mm. And he said the little weapon he did the movie that you sing. Uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, Speakman. Jeff, Speakman, yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. So, you know, it's the same thing. You fill in the void. Instead of a, a blank circle, it's going to be a dark circle. Mm -hmm. So, yep. yeah. Uh, okay, Danny, have to hear the sound and blending of the movement and cadence. And he also said, I agree on the odd counts, three, five, seven, nines on striking. Yeah, actually, there's a, there's, uh, there's a syncopation to it. That's why uh, the, the odd numbers are actually, I, I, th I think it's, it, it, it's more natural. Because you've got well, some syncopation to it. Well, in reality, it's more like unpredictable, you know. Mm. Uh, just like in, uh, I always like the uh, the unpredictable thing. 
you know, when, uh, when I was in kicking is, you know, I do the same thing with the counts, mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, during the super foot Bill Wallace is, you know, yeah. my kicking is, is based on that one. It's I start low, build it up side to side. Then I can fake right here, but I'll do a hook kick, you know, I'll pick with the fonts, but I can do a spin kick, the scorpion mm -hmm. kick kind of, yeah. I won't torque my body, but my face still turning right there. Sometimes they call it the mule kick here. You know, Tang Su, the people call it the mule yeah, kick. Yeah. You just torque your lower body. So, you know, being limber, that helps too. But the, the count itself for me is more a nice one because people are are used to doing, you know, one, two, one, two, three, four. You know, they. Uh, okay. Them. All right. Count, but if you make it an ad count, you know. You know, you you gotta be more like a poker player. <laughs> <laughs> you do a lot of you know. That's true. Let them assume that this is what I'm I'm gonna be you know, betting in there. So, but it, it's the unpredictable. It's more like an orthodox. Mm, 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 That's mm. why uh, what I do also is I teach us the zigzag, the stairway. Yeah, I call it the stairway. That's my my thing right there with the four corners we use it a lot because the, you know the rocking motion the duyan is what it tells you rock yeah, the duyan is like the pendulum exactly the swinging motion yeah you know uh, i know that's a good uh, name right there pendulum i yeah. call it the metronome yeah metronome yes yeah or yeah. the wiper yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know intermittent you know you don't know when it's going to come out Mm, you know, mm, so, mm. so yep it's more like that the uh the timing you know and the uh what they call it the the faking or the fainting of it you know, okay you always you can read their mind and let them read yourself that's what you know a lot of uh you know players are like that you fake down here but you hit right there you know you okay. hit him right here but you hit them down below and just kind of, you know, with the Sinawali, it's all, it's unpredictable. You don't know when they're going to strike. The same thing with the Redonda or the Pablo. Mm. Mm. So, because it's it's a continuous motion. Then when mm. we relate it to empty hands, is everything is, you use, like I said, the yeah. arm, the hand becomes a stick. And a lot of people, are, why do you wear gloves all the time? You know, one, one guy said, yeah, one time watching my posting and, on uh, Facebook, he said, why do you guys wear that? That's not really a Filipino martial art. Said, well, it is now because I want to protect my students, <laughs> you know, and when you're pressing, the hand is a target. <laughs> mm, that's true. That's in true. Sport, yeah, you want to, in reality, is you know, you don't have to wear gloves. You can yeah. break their, their hands, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And with the Sinawali, you can use any technique you want, you know, where it's a vertical punch, straight punch like karate or boxing you know or a back fist in hand hammer strike and it's continuous with the partners then you mm. do the circles also all the pabilo like yeah the speed ball mm. so on so that's mainly just based on the double six you know you have the short stick the dulo dulo it's the same yeah. thing you use yeah, either thing. this hand this hand back hand or in hand or palm hand yeah to work your way all the way back right there so it's mainly a lot of drills i know a lot of filipino martial art they do their own drills and i'm sure you know they, they will understand that and for me there is no right way or wrong way they're always it's, your way yeah it, it's 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 just that you have to make sure that your drills are more functional it ha you, you know its purpose and you yeah yeah but sometimes it's, it's uh, for me, it's, you know, how do you introduce it? You know, because mm. sometimes it's, you know, for them, it's too complicated. You know, That's true. Yeah. Complicated and to see how people like the score. How do you score that thing? Everybody just wailing. At <laughs> yeah. They're, they're wearing safety equipment. Sorry about my mm. dogs. No worries. No worries. Um, Danny's commented, yeah, show one angle and strike a different angle. Yeah, that's true. So it's part of the baiting system or in Ganyo. Yeah, Ganyo. As yeah. well. Yeah. Ganyar. Yep. 
yeah. to, to fake you, you know, and that's a Spanish word. Uh, I don't know what the right word for the Tagalog. Uh, I know there's uh, <laughs> That Loko, means uh, now. Lokoen is uh, Spanish also. Uh, Dayain. Yeah, yeah. Dayain. Daya. Oh, we call it Daya. But yeah. Meaning. Yeah. yeah, or pain. Painan mo. Pain, yeah, pain. Yeah. Uh, bait, bait him. Bait, bait, bait the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to uh, you know standardize everything, and uh, teaching is really. Also for me, mm -hmm. every time I teach for the long time, I'm always learning, you know, always learning. You know, teaching is learning and learning is to teach also. Yeah. So you have to show the way. Exactly. You compliment each other from doing that. But, you know, sometimes your students actually really know that, but you, you know, you learn how to understand, how, yeah. you know, how to give more feedback and more tools to their toolbox and whatnot you know yeah and actually like uh when when you teach there are a lot of things that you learn from your students as well it's oh yeah maybe not the technical aspect but basically how to break things down how to communicate uh your instructions even more even better sometimes it may work with with one student it won't work with others so gives you more tools as well yeah to explain mm -hmm. It's always, you know, you, you, you kind of benefit from it also uh, because uh, sometimes my students will always do something different that I've never seen before. I said, that's a lot better. And I would immediately compliment them, you know, mm. because right now I'm sharing all my knowledge to you. Yeah. Plus, you have your own knowledge to build it mm. up more. Yeah. Know? So it's like, you know, showing them, okay, here's how to build a building. <laughs> Start with okay. the foundation. <laughs> yeah. So for like okay, Jim. Um, for example, if people would like to learn from you, do you of course besides face to face, do you do online classes? I did that for a while during the pandemic, you know, but it's it's totally different because you know, you you have to learn how to read it in a way and mm -hmm. you know, I'm more like okay, uh, it's it's just different uh, you know like you're working remote re remote remotely yeah yeah mm -hmm. and depends on the person i would say so you know and that's why i did that video back way back when uh you know uh instructional class right there like the foundation of the finale system is mm. breaking down four corners it's a basic form that you learn from all the drills it's all applied right here but it's pretty basic yeah. you know and you just compose it all together and every meaning of it you know illustrating why do you do this i said you know you just want to protect yourself or both hands you know one hand is okay also but if you see it's small that's okay with it mm -hmm. it's but if it's you know if you see it's something heavier than yeah mm -hmm. you, know, you use two hands yeah you see to counter also with two hands right there mm. yeah so you learn how to do that defense mode right here yeah and one hand and working together so teaching is more like on online it's quite different but you know it's it's but it's depending on the person depending on the person they can say like contact you yeah mm -hmm. they can do all right just you know i would just give advice and you know Sometimes uh, uh, if there's a special request that really I do it personally, I would videotape myself and, you know, send it to them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have a small, like my own gym in the garage, you know, I go, you know one, my bag and mirrors mm -hmm. in there. And I did it a little bit during the pandemic. So we did our class, <laughs> but it's different. It is, it is. Uh, especially, it is. you know, with the sticks and kicks and punches, it's okay. But when you're, when you're dealing with bigger, you know, instruments like the staff, the ropes, mm. or the whips, you, know, you need more, you know. Special. You need more space. Yeah, more You space. need more headroom. Yeah. <laughs> well. but, uh, you know, the, the fundamental of the Hornala system is you don't really need a lot of spaces. You, know? mm. you have to adapt on a small 
like a galley. On, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just pretty tight. All you get the twisting of the body and movements of the head and awareness and whatever you can grab in your, <laughs> you know, out of reach, but you can reach it. You yeah. Use it, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, Danny had a nice comment here regarding earlier on, uh, and different people have different levels of intelligence as well as different ways of learning. That is really true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Some are really gifted to it, you know, I would say, but you can mold them to it mm. also. And, you mm. know, talent is something you own. Reality, you know, because I, I find that, you know, talent is everything on us that you know you own it oh wesley wes wesley just said uh master bong is the best oh yes. <laughs> that's great great to hear from wes <laughs> yeah he he was one of my uh first uh uh practitioner back way back when you know all right okay he was so young back then too and <laughs> he's super tall <laughs> I think he's six foot four. He said old student from the late 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Wes. Yeah, <laughs> good, good guy, you know, and still follows me around, you know, he, he's kind of, you know, watching my thing on Facebook. So it is nice. Great to hear from you, Wes. Mm. You're a good so, guy. I mean, what's, uh, what's in store for the future in the, how, uh, in your system and for yourself for me is you know i i pass it on already as much as i can with you know most of the people i get in contact with i'm happy where i am and i'm sure there's more out there and uh i'm just hope that there's more time for it <laughs> you know but you know if, this is my destiny i'm happy where i am and you know i have a good life mm -hmm and a happy life <laughs> so and the, it's just becomes a, a memory or a legend i would say so you know and that was my goal when i was younger is just to be you know to be able to teach and what's my you know it's my pride to do Philippine mm, martial mm, art. Mm. so and i'm really proud also with other instructors out there doing it continuously teaching and promoting Filipino martial arts. Yeah. So it's a very, very unique thing to, you know, to do Filipino martial arts. It's, you know, katutubong lahi. Yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, Jim, by any chance, are you going to be in in the Bayanihan next year? Uh, no, I, I think uh, one of my Turo students, Luke Holden, goes there. In the okay. Yep, he competes right there, Luke Holden. So he's uh, he's my representative at least. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. No, I was hoping I, I might because I I'll be going next year. Where then, is that gonna be at? Um, I'm gonna send you the details. I know this. Um, um, yeah, I'm gonna send you the details. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure basically where they're hosting it. Yeah. Uh, where they're holding it, but normally the Bayanihan uh, happens before, takes place before the FMA festival. Oh, uh, FMA festival? It's the, the one by uh, Bambit, uh, GM Bambit Dulay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard about that. I think I, I saw the posting of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So normally the, like the night before that, they, they, they do have the Bayanihan, okay. which is, which is kind of like a, uh, an FMA Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, but you've got in most... the Philippines, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In Manila or? In Manila, in Manila. In Manila, okay. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't heard anything about it yet, but I just saw some posting. Yeah. About it. So usually, you know, I I just wait for the invite. I just don't don't go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I invite, Fair that's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, Okay, as, are there any more questions from the uh, from those who are watching? Oh, Wesley, Wesley said I could never kick as high, maybe as you, <laughs> even though he's tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, you know, I, I love to kick. I'm a, mainly a kicker during my karate time. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> I love to kick. Yeah, all kinds of kick I want to try. <laughs> and uh, you know, combination kick is what I use. I work it out just like the sticks. I said, if you can do it with the yeah. sticks, you can do it with the kicks. The, the, you know, it's like an arm also. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. The discipline for that is, you know, you, you put your brain on that foot and the, the eye on your knees. So you can. <laughs> so no, yeah, I took, it, I took it's up, possible. You know? I took up warango uh, back in the 90s. Okay. Yeah, it's Korean art. Um, the, 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 the problem I have is I've got short, uh, hamstrings. So, uh, doing the hard stretching and the, the, the high kicks was kind of like, uh, painful for me. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I have to stick with the low kicks. <laughs> I only weigh like 130 pounds in my heyday. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I stretch all the time. I can do you know mm. straight split, the butterfly split, you know, and I'm more like I'm like a contortionist. Yeah, okay. I can put are my head between my my legs. Are you double jointed as well? Hypermobile. No, I'm not really really double jointed. It's just the practice I do. It's just, okay. You know, way back when it's the the workout, and you know, I used to have a stretcher bar in here. All and right. Above my head, that's where I put my my foot. You know, mm. like a six foot stretcher bar. That's what uh, I just, you know, I don't hold. I just put my foot up there and rest and do a mm. rest my foot right there. Then I wow. hold, I hold <laughs> on to the next stretcher bar and I do like you know fifty kicks with that foot without setting it down. Then I All right. it and just you know bal like taekwondo. Yeah, they taekwondo, try. yeah. Like super foot, Bill Wallace. <laughs> and they just keep doing that, you know. Then I do all the twisting, you know, spinning kick, spinning crescent, spinning back mm. kick. That's my, I like it a lot is the spinning back kick with the hook kick. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I When I was doing warango, those are basically my favorite kicks. Yep. The jumping, turning. Yeah, yeah jumping is yeah. Their, their favorite. Yeah, you know. jumping, spinning, back kicks and everything. Yeah, I love them. Yep. It's just except that, um, for example, if I every every time that we do hard, we do hard stretching and 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 training, it's it was like uh, uh, painful to a certain extent. And if ever I miss uh, training for one week or two week and I, two weeks and I go back to the hard stretching, back again, yeah. Ah, yeah. So I even did I even did gymnastics. So it's, it was the same. <laughs> Well, you know, they're they're always good. Uh, part of my workout back when is the, you know you know the jumping jack. Yeah. Right? But my jumping jack is like those ballet dancers. I cross my feet, crossing oh, yeah. mm. all mm. the time, and small one but fast. Yeah. You know that's all I do is cross, crisscross it. That's actually a good way to develop my explosiveness and control on air. Yep, and uh, high jump is what I like pre-standing you know i don't run i you know i just when i want to do a a jump kick is i just jump up high mm. without the momentum going forward because you yeah, yeah. It that way not like taekwondo they do a lot of a lot of running yeah and mm. they do that high kick no, you jump yeah. uh sushiro nakala is you know famous for that laying down jump kick you could jump up like a spring wow up here yeah mm -hmm. you know for me i could Standing up, I can do a front thrust kick like you know eight foot ceiling. I would kick it. Yeah, we a lot. So you you basically like to... develop you develop <laughs> like a vertical jumps then. Oh yeah, just straight up yeah. for the yeah vertical jumps yeah. Because you know being flexible, if you stretch your leg, you can reach the tip of your hand. You see mm. that the Chinese martial arts they just hold their yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Plus yeah. your jump, if you jump three foot, you know three foot off the floor. Plus this, you know, this height right here, you can reach eight foot. Mm. <laughs> so the same thing with the stick. We go back to Filipino martial art. You know, if I know I can kick you, I can hit you with my stick. Yeah. You know, so that's the thing is, you know, or further than that, how you stretch it. So yeah. That's more like scaling distance of what you have in your hands. Mm. So everything just kind of fused together. So it's more like a, you know, 
like I said, it's a melting pot for me that mm -hmm. you, you do everything in the Filipino martial or what you learn from other martial arts also. So, yeah. you know, but, you know, don't get me wrong. Traditional is always there. The Filipino yeah. Arts, you never there's, take it away. There's a question from uh, Wesley. What are, what are complementary martial arts that go with the Filipino arts? I would say uh, boxing is one. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Wing Chun is two. Because mm -hmm. they do a lot of the same hand motion. I read it, you know, the circular punches, they do that. But we do the figure eight, one and a half with it. Yeah. Uh, I would say... Uh, Talking about just the hand technique, I would say boxing and uh, the Wing Chun, pretty close, okay. to, you know. So and he has a follow-up question. There has been a lot of focus on mixed martial arts lately, mm -hmm. especially with grappling over punching or f fighting techniques. Yep. How do we communicate to kids and beginners the value of traditional arts and techniques? You know, with mixed martial art, for me, it's kind of, you know, there's, like, like I said, it's sports. There's rules, mm. okay? It's just like taking wrestling also in, you know, in school. There's rules because there's so much damage you can do if you want to really protect yourself from mm -hmm. a wrestler, you know? Because, you know, you just break the rules of what you know is, you know. But I don't know what, uh, repeat that question again. Maybe I can qualify. Uh, um, uh, where the first the first was more of like a statement or a, a sentence there has been a lot of focus on mixed martial arts lately mm -hmm. especially with grappling over punching and fighting techniques i think this is like a follow-up or uh like a, a follow yeah a follow-up on the on the question regarding what what martial arts uh is complementary yeah uh or what martial arts uh, would go with filipino martial as well the second one is how do we communicate to kids and beginners the value of traditional arts and techniques i think that's a good question there is a very good question right there it's the value of the traditional you know but uh, you know nowadays i'm not quite sure the traditional is more like i call it the old school but it's mm -hmm. good also because you know the foundation of it. But nowadays, you know, all the martial arts are really getting really amazing. You know, just like the grappling is there too. You know, they have more techniques than you can think of. And yeah. we're all more focused on one-on-one -on -one thing, you know. But imagine if you're out there on the streets, you, you, you're not going to deal with one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to deal with with one or two or three or more, you know, and when it comes to Filipino martial arts, you're going to be dealing with other objects that they'll be using, you know, and mm -hmm. getting involved to a knife fight is not going to be one on one. That could be two guys with a knife, <laughs> you know. But no, the really. thing is, how are you going to teach that the value of the tradition to the kids is, you know, like I said, tradition is always there. You show them the basics techniques and real then if you want to go more forward with it is you know you know just kind of okay not only filipino martial with sticks but you use empty hands also you know? mm -hmm. tradition is always there the you know whether it's single or blade or whatnot projectile or flexible mm. so, okay danny uh, commented MMA is about combat sport. FMA is much more than just fighting. Respect, discipline, conditioning, life skills, as well as fighting. That's yeah, actually, it you know, it's, mm. it's the way of life, and uh, it's also is how to protect yourself and re prepare yourself for it, you know, because you're more subjected to see, you know, uh, weapons on your assailant or, you know. You're doing for me, your competitor. You want to be better than the other guy. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's goal is like that: is to be good at it. Yeah, yeah. But I think, like, we, we really with kids, uh, the the value of tradition 
uh, traditional arts and techniques is really to 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 help them uh, develop self discipline mm -hmm. to basically to instill in them respect, respect. for oneself and others. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. And also, yeah, the life skill as for for defending themselves and also like conditioning their body. Yep. And not just the body. I think I I it, it's also like conditioning the mind as well. It's mm -hmm. which I is agree. Very exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. just kind of throw it out there. That's really good. Yeah. So, you know, and really a lot of uh, explaining, you know, how to introduce everything to them that you know, mm -hmm. this is a sports discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you'll be caring for your life. Huh? You know? Yeah, that's true. So, that's true. And that's true. You have to a lot of psychology also for that, too. You know, you can't use yeah. against your brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, there, there, yeah, there are a lot of things because, I mean, w when they learn martial arts from uh, from from uh, an early stage, that will also set tone on some of their moral values in life as they oh, as yeah. they grow up. Yeah, but there, their you know, ethical aspects as well. Mm -hmm. That would stick to them for the rest of their life, really. Mm. You know, because I met a lot of people all the time. Oh yeah, I know. They would say, yeah, I used to take that when I school, mm. and it was really. Fun and you know they, they learn the value of it too. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. and, but there's also uh, the other side of that is you know some people their confidence get too over their head. Yeah, and, that's true. That's true. Especially the younger kids, you know, and you've heard that in back in the Philippines. There's they get really uh, bullhead about it and you know, bullying mm -hmm. other kids. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. They can be okay. I'm a tough guy, so but yeah, I've seen a few like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I mean that sometimes even with kids, even like with in some sometimes in the industry now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, like social media actually paved way to a lot of uh, those type of personalities coming out. Oh yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, the generation is getting different, but, you know, like you said, we have to set value of the mm. tradition, you know. Yeah. It's, with, you know, the technology nowadays, too, is there, you know. It's always different in every, every year is changing, you know. Yeah. Plans, you know, we always say progress is good, but we still want the, the old way sometimes. Mm. You know? Yeah, so, exactly. And, uh, you know, growing up, Back then, it's we all respect the older people. You know, yeah, or who that's we true. are, you know, anybody, the aunt, cousins, whatnot, friends. Mm. You know, but nowadays you, you hardly see that anymore. You know, nah, so, it's but you yeah, know, it is what it is, and you know, mm. uh, our, our way was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, like, that, it's like telling your kids, you know, when I was growing up, I have to ride a water buffalo to go to school. Mm, yeah, I have to do this, I have to do that. <laughs> then the Kalesa, and I have to cross the river and walk under the rain. Yeah, yeah, okay. Danny's, uh, Danny made good comments again, conditioning the body, the mind, and your inner spirit. Actually, yeah, very true. Um, and also the morals, the ethics, and the integrity. Yeah. yeah and true. yeah, I think yeah. that that also that should also go with the adults, not just kids. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. At least you know we understand it as we as an adult. Yeah. We'll try to understand it as much yeah. as we can and control okay. ourselves, our emotions yeah. and whatnot, you know. Yeah. Everybody Wes, has good feelings. Wes has a question. How do you feel about many local martial arts? tournaments focus on flashy forms versus practical forms it seems that flash scores more points do you think this is true are um, the standards of uh world tournaments different no no they depends on who's judging mm -hmm. so yeah, for me you know judging is sometimes could be biased sometimes could be not to be truthful mm -hmm. about it and right yeah that's true something Mm. But it is what it is, uh, you know, you can just say your opinion to them that, you know, 
this guy is just so flashy, but I get, I did the tradition, you know. It's, you know, the tradition kick is, you know, I kick him in the stomach or the knee, and this guy kicks really way above the head, and he gets a better score. But, you know, he, judging is more like, do you have to, to go to uh, orientation, a seminar for that, how to judge a competition, especially in forms or fighting, mm -hmm. to understand it. So, but it's beyond your control because you can't, you don't know what the, you know, the, the scoring system or what's in their head, you know, or what, what they see in their eyes. So that's very controversial, actually. That's a question right there, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, I think even like, for example, um, like, what what do they what do they call this now extreme extreme sport or something so they do have like some of the form competition like with katanas and everything or with kamas and everything then they're like executing things so fast mm -hmm. so aggressively and of course a lot of them with uh with uh with uh acrobat acrobatics as well mm -hmm. i mean of course some some instructors would think that's not that's no longer practical <laughs> yeah. yes, it, doesn't, it doesn't show practicality but yeah. in a sense you gotta be showing more you know it's very cinematic it's good yeah movies or that's a thing yeah mm -hmm. it's it's but, it's artistic it's yeah. uh very athletic mm -hmm. and it's very cinematic <laughs> yeah. yeah and if you compare it to traditional it's you know there's no comparison but if you're doing a traditional you, you score the traditional instead of yeah. the, whoa where did this guy learn his art you know this is more like you know he's putting yeah. different stuff in it but you know for us it's also complementary because we do the open where yeah. you can do you know that division is separate from the you know the yeah division. So, yeah it's actually nice that like in gb in gsba you've got that separation between traditional and the contemporary one yeah because at least you as a competitor you basically know okay now I'm, I'm i'm competing in that contemporary one i can do tricks i can do this i can do that but at least you know that okay this is this is for this competition and yep. if you compete in the traditional one you need to be a little bit more i would conservative about it you have to be more yeah, truthful to your, practical truthful to your art about it mm -hmm. so uh, but so. in a sense also the the open or the uh, contemporary uh competition is you know you have to do at least 80 percent of mm. the traditional technique. traditional one yeah and you just enhance it you know? yeah exactly yeah exactly but oh, yeah. it takes a lot of skills to do that because you're yeah adding to it. Mm. so but there's yeah. you know certain rules or what they call it uh how do you say it that, that what you can apply to it mm. is it, it's it's tough also to you know to judge it that way because you get like i said you gotta have a really good eye and yeah more, uh what's called diverse in all different kinds of techniques in mm. one you know, yeah sometimes whoa is that possible you know you're doing a backflip at the same time you're doing yeah pinawali or you know you probably yeah. don't there you know, and yeah. i've seen that before a guy was doing a a, a pair of nunchucks and he does a really high you know, somersault backflip, and he was <clears> doing, <throat> then he landed, you know, like a good stance, which is nice, you know, just imagine <laughs> the tricks right there. But, you know, that's part of it. It's more like, you know, uh, what's it called that competition? Paul Mitchell, karate mm. competition. You know, yeah. Those are pretty impressive. You know, it's a different kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, Danny commented unfortunately ex spectators who pay the bills don't understand the practical whereas they emotionally are thrilled by the flash so competitions become flashy driven it's actually true it's actually yeah. true you know. i mean i think that 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 happens almost in 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 any type of competition as well in order to be to, to make it more appealing to the audience oh, yeah. well, I have that experience because with my team, you know, I mean, just kind of, I just kind of, from the wind, I just heard, oh yeah, yeah, they're the flashy people. 
<laughs> well, if you can deliver, why not? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just can now, okay, yeah, well, but you know, we still do the tradition and we're effective. That's one thing mm -hmm. I want to show, you know. Yeah. It still works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to be flashy, you see some, you know, yeah. Here, but that's part of it. But, I mean, the thing is, the, th the thing is, if you're, if you're competing, and this is basically the, the criteria in this particular competition for you to win that competition you have to basically uh follow the criteria and oh, yeah. if 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 the, the criteria basically is asking you to be flashy you have to do it <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like gymnastic you know yeah there's a lot of hard stuff that they you know mm. their criteria right there is very very uh, challenging yeah uh, what you call that? Uh, I watch a lot of the ice skating competition mm. too. And those are, you know, they they talk about speed, right? They too mm. speed how they can execute that in a short period of time. Yeah. Airborne. So mm. airborne, same thing, yeah. you know, Filipino martial art. The way I look at it, you know, I, you know, that's how I I show how to do it, and maybe they can do better than me, <laughs> you know, in a way because you know everybody has their own talent. So, okay. Uh, we got a question from Kurt. Oh, the team Paul Michel NASCA days. Are you seeing more FMA competitors in open martial arts tournaments? Uh, uh, I haven't been in karate lately. I'm more focused on the you know FMA competition. So it's been a while, but I've seen a few people, very few people, handful compete in the open. Yeah, in the open uh, martial art tournament. Maybe I think if if also like FMA would manage to carry on delivering a competition similar to the open martial arts tournaments, uh -huh. yeah, then yeah. we would have like more com FMA competitors. Yeah, competing that's more. one thing yeah. you know. I uh, with my training is we focus on weaponry, but you know we do a, uh, some empty hands. Also, I get the, my experience from doing karate and boxing mm. and for point system it that's mainly it you know mm. we're working on speed and technique so but uh, the drawback is way back when it if you wear a vest and uh, you know your belly sticking out seems like okay <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you know the southern outfit the traditional yeah. thing and a sash yeah and we did an open tournament way back when too is uh, you know chinese martial arts seldom you see them there and most of the time they would tap the uh, weapon mm. competition, you know. And uh, yeah, a lot of people would hear it from the hard style that oh, they're just so flashy, you know. But, you know, that's why it's effective. But you know, but the same thing uh, as I generated it, you know, my stuff might be flashy, but it does work. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. So uh danny if you want to win you have to stand out from everyone else yes of course so yep. competitors yep. became louder faster more gymnastics driven and flashy or more effective that's mm. one yeah out. yep yep that's true. proving yourself that's a very nice yeah quote right there so yeah and that's why i think uh if you're if you're going to be like being coach in like in this type of competition you need to have a coach who understands basically how to how to help you stand out in that particular competition. Yep. So you you, the full concentration to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I took uh, acting back then, back when I was in the Philippines. You know, part of my course is uh, drama, so mm -hmm. it, the facial expression is very important. Also, if you're doing form, you know. Yeah. You have to give that feeling and you know you, your eyes also tells the story when you do it yeah so you know <laughs> the emotion must come out oh yeah too. yeah you have to you know you don't think about the people who are watching or you're judging you know yeah they're just about you know they disappear but your focus is you're on your own space yeah. right there yeah, you invite them into your space. <laughs> that's that's oh, yeah. the idea. And you show fire in your eyes. Yeah. So, so that's why karate does the yell and scream and the yell and whatnot, you know. That's, you know, 
it's a good folks uh, showing the strength and yeah they are there and the, the louder the better yeah they can they, snap your, you can snap your uniform you know yeah Same thing with stick it's you can just you know whirl it you know swing it and you know make the twin yeah make a sound out of it you know yeah the um, only thing is is the only thing is sometimes I think the, the the competitors need some coaching on when to shout and how to shout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sometimes they just scream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, shout. It's, it's all psychological. Uh, you know, we use that a lot. You know, especially you you know, like it's like a self defense thing. Yeah, your it voice is, is it powerful. Is. Mm, you know, yeah, you know, if you have a tool, make, you carry a whistle, and you know. You get more attention that might save your yeah, life yeah that's true that's true you know, that's but, true you know, and uh, in order for you not to hurt anybody you don't want to carry a knife or, a gun, <laughs> you know, or anything else out there that projectile so you'll just get into trouble <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah okay danny commented effectiveness should be a major factor but again unfortunately few judges today look at effectiveness yeah i mean i think in any competition there will always be a judge or judges that will be biased oh yeah it, it, you know you bias know, against you yeah, or, anybody, <laughs> or anybody you know but you know it's, that's the way it is sometimes it is yeah that's the way it is with their mind yeah you know, and it is what i mean even, if, even in dance competition that's why i oh, i only I only I only competed twice, uh, so but because it was like so much negativity, so much bias, and everything. It's like oh, I don't I I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, well, this, sometimes you know it's more like politics, right there. So but, too much politics. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, exactly. But exactly. right here in this forum, right here, this is nice because we get to talk about all this stuff that's going on yeah. in the field of sports, you know, and mm. especially we're more focused on that. Filipino martial arts, but yeah. you know, we're all brothers in competition, and you know, we try to give fairness to everyone, and just prove yourself that you're, you know, good at it. That they're yeah, on, on the floor, true. competition. You know, that's true. And everybody's good with it. They have their own thing. You master your own self, right there. Mm. So mm. you know, it's sports is what I usually more focus. It's more like you know. That's mm. how well, how are you gonna probably gain more younger generation yeah. to to practice? Of course, of course. That's that's. I mean, I think with with especially if you got like kids as a students, one way for your, to get good retention with kids is to expose them to competitions. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, and you know, impress them of oh you know what they can do in the in the long yeah run. exactly 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 oh wow this has been a very nice uh discussion with you jim uh and it just actually we just uh, uh went over two hours oh, really? <laughs> yeah we did we did okay so we need to wrap this up now <laughs> well, yeah, i hope you know i uh, i was able to express or answer some of the questions and yeah. share what I do and who I am and getting to know everyone mm. in this uh, forum right here. So yeah. it's been great. It's a pleasure to be yeah. in this podcast right here. And yeah, I thank everyone and yeah. good, you know, hello and goodbye. We yeah, we 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 are so blessed to have you in, in, in the in the podcast. You know, maybe one time uh we can basically talk about forms competition. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we can basically like uh, have that as a, as a as a as a topic for discussion. So let's, yeah, yeah. I'll try my best how to break it down and you know <clears throat> and get more information from different uh, competition or organization. Yeah, uh, you know how to balance everything out for all yeah. the, uh, the players. And it's also it will be a good it will be a good uh, I would say. Uh, uh, learning uh, yes. point as well for 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 those who are for those who watch this podcast and basically those who are coaching 
uh, yeah. students for competition as well. Yep, and you know, I gain a lot of friends this way too. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. So true. We never say goodbye. We only say see yeah. You later. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> Oh, okay. So Wesley said also talk about making beautiful weapons. Oh, yeah. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm an innovator. I enjoy, uh, you know, like I said, I enjoy any blades, weaponry, sticks, uh, ropes, flexibles, knives. Uh, um, maybe we can, yeah, you, you can feature that one time, Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. uh, you know a lot of innovation that's also safe mostly mm. what i do is all the mock-up of uh, weaponry that i make yeah that'll be safe for competition okay so. all right okay and last comment from uh, last two comments from danny politics there is politics in competition can oh, be there, there's always <laughs> No, he says it with a laugh with, with an lol <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's very true but you know there's gotta be politics, no matter what, because they're the, they, you know, they're the leader and the yeah, organize everything. So yeah, but so yeah, okay. and then he said a great interview with an awesome, open-minded instructor. Thank you. Oh, so well, thank you. You know, and uh, I'm glad you, I, I, you know, I can help everyone of what they have in questions. And yeah. Also give more information what I can offer in the Filipino martial arts. Yep, and it will be great to have you back. As our guest, J.M. Wong. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye. All right. In behalf of uh, FMA discussion, uh, the admin and those who are uh, the interviewers and moderators and the FMA community, thank you very much, J.M. Wong, for, for being our guest for episode uh, 396. Maraming salamat po. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay. Okay. See ya. Um, Alam po. Right. Okay. So thank you guys for watching uh, and giving those uh, great comments uh, during the interview. Um, we do hope that you like it and you learn from it. So next time we'll bring GM Bong back uh, and talk about like uh, coaching, um, uh, form competition, and also he will be showcasing the weapons that that he he made okay so thank you very much everybody enjoy the rest of your day um and enjoy the rest of your week as well signing off <laughs>